you very much, everybody, for joining us. And for those of you that just saw that show reel, um, that's kind of the best introduction we could ever possibly give uh, to Wade Eastwood. Thank you. And joined on stage by Kieran Clark. Um, thank you guys for being here. And, uh, and of course, we all, we love motorcycles because we ride them. And I think we often forget how important motorcycles are to culture and how important they are to the movie business, to advertising, to storytelling. You know, we, we, we still, you know, every time uh, an iconic actor is doing an action movie, they need to do an incredible motorcycle stunt. Uh, and, and there's probably a degree of competition in that and outdoing each other. But we forget that it's important to other people, that, that the rest of the world out there loves motorcycles almost as much as we do. And a huge part of that is uh, thanks to Hollywood and, and the way that we're portrayed as a culture. Um, and a lot of that is down to these two guys. Um, and, and Wade, as you'll have seen from the reel, is responsible for making a lot of people look very, very good, from, from you know, Tom Cruise, to, well, everybody, basically. So um, thank you for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me. And what we really want to talk about or hear about from you is the truth behind all of this, a little bit of who really rides and how hard, and how you, how you well, let's start with how you got into this. So I got in when I was really young, 19 years old. <clears throat> I grew up in South Africa in a little beach town, and a, a film company came to town and needed someone to crash a car, a very low-budget film. And uh, I put my hand up. Uh, I was a lifeguard on the beach, and they just said, "Will you jump out of a helicopter, because that's what we sort of did for Air Sea Rescue. Um, and then just one thing led to another. And they're like, can you ride a bike? I said, yes. And, and I had a passion for bikes and cars a lot. So that sort of, I sort of got thrown into it at 19 and worked for a lot of really dodgy B-movies that you probably have never seen but, um, and never want to see. But I did sort of, they sit on VHS. Uh, <laughs> so I did a lot of that when I was 19, 20, through my 20s. Uh, broke a lot of bones and sort of learned the hard way. There was a lot of safety. Uh, I never saw an airbag until I was, I think, 30. Everything was boxes and mats and ground. Uh, and then sort of sort of hard, hard start, but it gave you a good grounding then for appreciating when you got to the, the bigger, more structured health and safety, slightly more serious films. And how long, well, when, did, when was that turning point where you found yourself doing the big Hollywood movies with the big A-listers and they're like, right, well, we, we need... Well, actually, how does it work? Because obviously, I know Tom Cruise rides a lot of his, his, the bikes. He rides them himself. You know, when was that turning point where you're there going, well, I'm going to make this guy look good and wear what he's wearing and ride a bike and do something incredible? What was that big moment? Uh, my big moment was Bond. Uh, Wall is not enough. I hustled hard <clears throat> the big stunt coordinators that were around and second-year directors and really sort of put my name out. It was very tough. It's very clicky industry it's very hard to get into and once you're in it's very hard to get work because you know there's good money to be made and it's a it's a fun career um so i sort of really pushed pushed hard and persevered and kept bugging them to the point you know where i wouldn't take no for an answer and i got the opportunity to test uh, some bikes and cars for bond and then test the jet boat in the water's not enough which we actually did here at tobacco dock down the, oh, down really? the back here wow. yeah um and i ended up doubling pierce brosnan and they used to call me Smiler, because stop smiling, because I used to always be showing my teeth and takes, because I couldn't stop smiling. I couldn't believe I was doing Bond. <laughs> um, so from this little B-movie guy in South Africa. So that was sort of the big stepping stone. And once you were in the A-movies, if you like, it's the same stuff. It's just there's more money, more budget to make better action. Uh, and that's really what I wanted. I just wanted more, more budget so that I could, if I wanted to train an actor to ride a bike so that the camera can subjectively follow the actor through the scene, the emotional scene he might be having, getting onto the bike, doing the chase, and then culminating whatever the finish is. If you're cutting to stunt doubles all the time, you, you lose that subjectivity with the actor, and the audience lose the connection, the emotional connection. Um, and that's where actors like Tom, for example, um, train really, really hard. Uh, I mean, he's already can ride a bike. Um, but then we went into a real, really hard training schedule on uh, Rogue Nation where Kieran, um, with his you know, amazing background in bikes, uh, worked really hard at giving those tips um, you know, to, to Tom, to just the tips that we all need, like coaching, to get him faster. And he got like, ridiculously faster. We used to time his laps without telling him, obviously, because if he knew he was on a clock, he would <clears throat> kill himself trying to beat the clock. So we used to hide it amongst ourselves, and uh, we have another I've got to mention a guy we got in the audience, actually, Rick English. Stand up quickly, Rick, over there. 
Just give a quick wave. That is the man on Rogue Nation who did the big high side, if you've seen it, where the bike high sided and tumbled down the street. Oh, yeah. That was actually Ouch. Rick. He did that for real. Um, very gnarly stunt. Um, we worked together for many years. So, um, yeah, we do, on missions in the movies that I do, we do everything for real. And Tom does 100% of the stunts himself. He's very, he's bike mad, bike and car mad. And so speaking of the whole issue of capturing that, and, and hearing the reason you're here is, you know, how do you film that stuff? I mean, we, obviously we'll get back more to the stunts and things, but we've got this incredible rig over yeah. here. This, this He's going to underplay it. He'll, he'll underplay it, but I challenge anyone that thinks they're a good rider to ride that camera bike because I've been in situations with him leading me in a commercial and been drifting through a corner with him in front of me, completely two-wheel sliding with a heavy camera on the back on that bike. <clears throat> and I've aborted because I thought he was going to crash. Four takes in a row I've, I've aborted because I thought he was going to crash, and he somehow just gets out of it. But it's really hard to ride. So you ride the camera bike? Yeah, we ride the camera bike, yeah. and... and you know, fortunately, I was brought in under uh, Wade's guise uh, nearly 10 years ago. So from um, superbike racing and motocross, I was at a kind of a, a crossing point in my racing career. And then the opportunity to, to join Wade um, on Rogue Nation was like 2014. Um, and again, a testament to Wade, which he'll underplay himself as well, is the fact that um, to, to put a real action movie together, it will get authentic specialists um, combined with the best actors, the best um, stuntmen and women, and put this amazing ensemble together to give an authentic experience. And, you know, I was very fortunate to obviously be brought on at that, at that point. And then, like I say, we've grown from that point to... Um, Strapping a camera to the bike. Yeah, we developed that strap. bike like yeah, incredibly. Yeah. So it's a fully electric, so it's fully silent. So you can shoot a dialogue scene <clears throat> with no noise, and you could follow the actor getting on his motorbike and then taking off, and you go from, you know, two miles an hour on the stage onto a bike and 100 mile an hour down the street and capturing the same moment, um, which is which is an incredible thing to do. Kieran's story, I'm going to tell it quickly because it's quite interesting to me, but I use a lot of races, motorbike races in film because you can't buy that high intensity, the peripheral vision they have, that the, the reaction times they have, and <clears throat> everything goes with it. It's quite easy to teach them film, camera and lighting, rather than take someone from film and teach them how to be a rider that's been riding since they were four years old. You can't do it that way around. Um, Kieran had a bit of a crash, I won't get into it too much, when he was superbike racing and, you know, it's really, it's quite a tough one when you race your entire life and suddenly someone says, you know, you're never going to race again and the sponsors are quick to, uh, quick to forget. So we got together and I said, let's start this, get, get this company going because no one's doing it in the UK. America was developing faster, um, but on the camera bikes, we we're still using old motocross bikes with scaff tubes and and things on a, on a Bond movie or a Mission Impossible. And, you know, the guy coming around the corner, it was dangerous for the rider. You see some of these guys come off the camera bikes and you can't just throw yourself clear. You're in among scaff tubing and your arm's going to get snapped through it when you, you know, it's, it was horrible. So I said, let's build the next technology. And then he took it to the next level. So what's under the hood, as it were? Well, it's, um, it's a fully custom bike, but it's got an a zero, electric zero powertrain. So I don't really like promoting that too much, but it is a very good, solid base. Um, luckily for the next project we've got coming out, we're going to take the electric to the next level. Again, the functionality of it. Um, we also built a, a fantastic off-road bike for uh, Mission 7 for, for Wade's latest project. And again, just to enhance Tom, enhance Wade and the other stunt performers. And it's like uh, we mentioned um, Mr. Batman two times. Ben Affleck, Robert Patterson, Rick English. Um, uh, work with him it's a all the time, but the, 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 the perfection within the artist of Rick English, um, to be able to have the trust, and just like Tom, to be able to ride the lens so close to them where you, everything's fine. You've got to trust your, measures. your, yeah. your, your, your the person mm -hmm. you're riding with, because obviously if he 
crashes. We want to be wide on the lens, not tight. We don't want to <coughs> cheat it. Obviously, if we go longer on the lens and tighter, we could be further away. But then it compresses the shot so much. So we want to be wider and be close mm. so the audience get the thrill of almost you know, coming at you VR experience. So we go wide and close is the way we shoot. I mean, I, I'm in awe of that. I mean, a, a few years ago, I was asked to um, do a shoot with Bike Magazine, which is it's not about me, obviously. But, so, but I will mention this because it's relevant, is that they said, can you come really close to the van? And this guy with a camera hanging out of a, a transit van, and they wanted my front wheel this far from the rear bumper. And it's terrifying for anyone to ride that close to anything. So you guys taking that to that next level at speed. I was doing 20 miles an hour. But you're so nervous of any bump in the road and, yeah. and then breaking even slightly suddenly. I so had a the camera. level of trust must be unbelievable. It, I had a camera on the front of the M3 in Morocco on the 203. It's a famous road in Morocco. If you haven't ridden it and you go over there on a bike, it's phenomenal. And uh, <clears throat> it was Rick English riding and Kieran and Tom. I had to chase all three of them. And Jenny Tinmouth, those that know Jenny Tinmouth, she works with us as well. She's an incredible rider, the silent killer that lady is. I'm telling you, mm. she's amazing. And um, I actually have marks on the mat box of the camera where I was rubbing their rear tire on, wow. on the 203 at about 80, 80, 90 mile an hour through there, which uh, the camera guy came and showed me the mat box afterwards. He brought it over to me and showed it to me. <laughs> and so presumably you have an electric bike in that silence. You're able to get shots with that now. How would you have done that before electric power or have you just opened up a whole new range of... N noisy, normal bikes, right. um, but with lots of scaff tube and you know, it looks like something out of Judge Dredd, which is a bike movie we won't mention. Judge Dredd and, <laughs> Judge Dredd and Biker Boys, I think we can put that firmly aside. Um, Ghost Rider's another one. Sorry, Rick. <laughs> he doubled the guy in Ghost Rider. Um, but yeah, there's been, you know, we've done some awesome stuff. I mean, for me, it was, when I was a kid, it was Top Gun, um, 86 sort of era with Tom and the Ninja. 900 racing against the F-14 on the runway. And I actually, it's a true story, this. I actually went on my MT-50, my Honda MT-50, and which is like the DT-50, those that don't know back in the day, but smaller, down to Virginia Airport in South Africa, and I raced the Cessna 152. <laughs> and uh, it's a true story. And I won. The Cessna one. <laughs> that was such a shit bike. <laughs> And as a, a stunt professional and rider, uh, and what are the films that you admire? And, and, and you know, what's, what's the history from you as a, as a film buff who, I mean, I know you love the genre as well. Yeah, I do. I mean, you know, what, what, are, what are the things where you like, especially knowing before there was, you know, so, such sophisticated equipment and good motorcycles, what are the, the movies and stunts where you go, it's wow? It's an easy one for me. Uh, Sherlock Jr., 1924, Buster Keaton. Oh, Buster Keaton. I mean, that motorbike sequence was, Phenomenal. Uh, it was like, you know, the suspension in those days was terrible. The bike geometry, um, Harley, it was a Harley J Bird, a J series or something, or one of the old Harleys. And it was uh, 1924. So you imagine the roads were terrible. They didn't have nice transitions onto railway tracks. You know, you hit the railway tracks and went over them. And what he did on that bike, riding what we'd call trick riding, stunt riding today on the handlebars, and he only cheated it for one shot with a trike. Uh, you know, for the, of, of him on the top, it was all real. He taught himself how to do it. Um, and to play the long one shots that they did in that era was, um, was pretty incredible. And then, I don't know, bikes, bikes for me have to become a character in the film. Uh, the Great Escape, obviously, um, 62, that era, that was, uh, the bike was his freedom. And bikes are always associated either with gangs and rogue bad boys and girls, or they're associated with riding and having the freedom to ride and, and in that scenario, the freedom to escape. So I think uh, it depends which route you That's go. That's a there. whole new metaphor I hadn't even thought about before. Yeah. But I guess it's a bit obvious, isn't it? Did you see the great escape replica we have here? I haven't. It's got the sign behind it and everything. It's fabulous. I'll show you where it is afterwards. Yeah. I, was, I mean, that's obviously an iconic film, but... We've, I think generally bikes are associated with freedom or with gangs and bad boys image. Um, Easy Rider, probably the 70s, 69, 70, that was 69. Um, a little bit more where we came into sort of the freedom era. Um, 51 Roman Holiday, it's a Vespa, it's still a bike, 125, uh, which was sort of more the romance, which I think Quadrophenia in 79 destroyed that element yeah, of <laughs> Vespas being romantic. Uh, and, you know, there's always up and down, but they've always, bikes have just always been associated with, you know, 
you, they just people leave you tend to leave you alone. I find when I ride my bike, I did a big trip from Los Angeles to Guatemala uh, with my wife on my on my bike years ago. Just got away, turned the phones off, and disconnected. And everyone was like, "Do not go through this part of Mexico and the Yucatan. You will get, <clears throat> you know, destroyed." And people, you could not have been nicer to you on a motorbike. So it's got something. Bikes have got something. Yeah, they have. You hear that a lot. I mean, obviously, some of you might have been here for the rally talk earlier. You hear people being told about all sorts of places they shouldn't go. And as soon as you're on two, two wheels, yeah. you're in a whole another world. Uh, and, and I think one of the things that we, we don't realize as, as, as punters is how fast and how hard you have to ride a motorcycle, even a normal scene. I mean, I think in the, in the opening of, the, of that the second Tron movie, where he's riding the Ducati Sport Classic, mm -hmm. and he just does a little jump by, you know, the, going... The, faking going up the slip road to the cop and then he jumps and goes in the tunnel. But having been filmed riding, whenever I've seen myself being filmed, I'm like, I look really slow and I was trying really hard. Yes. Yeah. So there was a camera on me and I go, oh, that looks really pedestrian. It's it looks like hardest. I'm going shopping. And it is so hard, you yeah. guys, when, even at that level of just riding a bike, your body language, I mean, how much do you really have to amp it up and make it look really good rather than just pin it. No, you do, that's exactly it. Because we're never going 140, 50 mile an hour. It just, the, there's no camera bike or car that can keep up. The gyros on the cameras as well will just get thrown out. So, and it's obviously very dangerous. You lose at that speed, you've lost your lead actor and then you, you've got nothing else to do for the rest of the year. Um, so, we, we've, you know, most car chases and bike chases very seldom go over 80 miles an hour. Tom definitely pushes that envelope a lot um, because his passion for cars and bikes and, and also he's competent. Mm. And that's the hardest thing, it's, you've got to have your competency. We generally try and build the custom bikes to be more like race bikes. Um, you think of uh, Pedrosa and Stoner when they moved to MotoGP, the bigger bikes, very <laughs> difficult for them to move those bigger bikes because of their size compared to other riders. And it's the same thing with us, with bikes, an actor, you know, you sort of, you've got to make him, he might be riding socially his whole life, but you've got to suddenly turn him into a superbike rider, ability-wise, on different surface roads. So, a lot of physical training. We do a lot of physical training. And Tom, on his own, does ridiculous amounts. I mean, he knows what, what program, what, what condition he's got to be in to achieve the shot. So, uh, he's, yeah, he's, he's a demon for that stuff. Who dis... When you have got your script for your film and there's a motorcycle stunt in it, who decides on what that's going to be? Does that come from a screenwriter or does that come from the stunt team? Like, the, the choice of what happens, is that...? Missions are a little different, but generally it'll... For, for me, it'll say, um, we, they'll, they'll say, we'd love to do a bike chase in this movie. We don't know where, um, but somewhere we've got to put it in. And the same with cars. And then. He's someone's, or he or she's got to get from this point to that point, and we're like, well, bike chase here would be great. And then I'll normally write a beat sheet, it's called, which is a bunch of ideas, and pitch it, and um, we'll adjust it, and then that's how it comes in. So it doesn't say, it's not detailed in the script, it just says, a chase ensues. Right. And then they're somewhere else. And then we either write a car chase, bike chase, running foot chase, roof chase, whatever it is. Um, so we develop the script that way. And when you've decided what you're going to do, the, the planning process to then execute it, I know, depending on what it is, like, how much detail do you have to go into for sort of ramps and speed? And yeah, lots. Uh, I mean, you know, you've got stunt guys, we, there's a bunch of us. So if I get in a costume and I hurt myself, they'll just get Kieran or Rick or someone else, you know. So there's lots of guys that can do it. But if you've only got one Angina Jolie, one Tom Cruise, so, you know, then you've, you're a bit buggered. So we've got to take care of them, but mm. we've also got to give them, push them, otherwise you get a boring shot which looks slow, and then the audience, you know, or we speed it up in camera, and the audience know that these days. They're not, the audience are much more savvy than they were many years ago in the, in the sort of earlier era, but that's the difficult part, is having the budget and the time to train the actors to be competent enough that if you see them ride, you'd be like, well, I wouldn't put a stunt double on that bike because he or she is doing a fantastic job safely, now we can push the action more and deliver more for the audience in camera. And, and obviously we know Tom Cruise is legendarily gnarly, but who else is a, a little bit kind of a thrill seeker? I mean, I, I've heard Angelina Jolie likes heights a bit too much. She loves heights, yeah. That, that shot on my show where I've heard jumping off the building, that was downtown Los Angeles. Um, she couldn't get enough of it. She, you know, she just wants higher. We did a, 
you're kill me if I say this. I don't know how far out this is going. I'm Not far. No okay, one has, no, and this, this lot won't tell anyone. Well, an actor. I'll just call him an actor. You can make up your own decision who it was. But there was a Tomb Raider movie we did with Angelina and another actor. And there's a scene where they hang upside down and they descend this big wall. And the other actor was basically shitting himself. Um, as he was hauled up. And we do, you know, we do it in gradients because it's not for everyone. So we we'll go up in gradients and we do drops in the rehearsal area. And I normally make them try and shout at me and swear at me or sing a song or something so they take their mind off it, which they normally end up shouting at me anyway. And we go up until they get more comfortable. And it does take a while, like learning to ride a bike, you know, like adjusting to height. But we got to the quarry in Wales, which was freezing. And this actor was <coughs> properly bleating on the way up to number one's on the winch. It was about 100 foot drop on, the, on cable, so it's free fall, and then we descend, we descend you like six foot from the ground. And uh, Angelina was upside down on the camera. She, we, we got mics on like this, and she just turns, she's upside down with a gun, and she just turns around, oh, I nearly said his name, shit. She just turns around to him, and she goes, oh, bleep, bleep, whatever his name is, stop being such a pussy. I just knew that was <laughs> what she was gonna And be. I'll never forget it, honestly, on camera. And he like, looked at, he was quite a tough guy, he, like looked at her, and then we're like, Three, two, one, action. We just drop them and <laughs> go on with it. And uh, yeah, wow. so she's, Angelina's uh, awesome. Uh, Brad Pitt, mad on a bike. Um, inside a little story for, for those that are interested, but we did a movie called Troy, and uh, we had to quad our way from the base camp down to the beach in Mexico. And there was two raptors arrived, which are really quick quads. So the producers came quickly and said, look, I don't want any of the cost to get these, so can you just absorb these amongst the stunt guys to you? So I kept one for myself, obviously, and gave one to someone else. And we used to tear down to the beach on the Raptors. And Brad comes down on his Honda 4 track or whatever it is, and he sees the Raptor, and he's like, how do you get that? Because he's a proper bike. He loves his bikes. And I'm like, ah, oh, it was, you know. So he goes, I, I want that. So I'm like, you can't. You, and the producer told me, no way. So I'm like, nah, you, you can't. He sent his guy, we're in Mexico, in Cabo San Lucas, by the next morning, his guy had driven from Los Angeles, from Yamaha and Lincoln Avenue in Los Angeles with two brand spanking new Raptors down to Mexico. This is a true story. <laughs> and there's Achilles in his helmet. And I hear a commotion. I walk up, I've got 75 stunt guys and girls um, all dressed. And they are firing their rubber bone arrows, their rubber arrows at Achilles on a Raptor over the sand dunes. And I was like, got up and I was like, what the <laughs> are you guys doing? And he was just going up and down like a moving target, having the best time ever on his Raptor. And wow. I mean, we could, that could have been the end of Troy. <laughs> so, Damn, I yeah. want to see that video. A little inside. That was wow. very funny. I had to, as a boss, had to not laugh and enjoy the fact of what they were doing, but try and bollock them all, yeah. And so, uh, in terms of, I mean, th there's a few obvious questions here. I mean, what is the gnarliest stunt that you've had to do, especially, obviously, motorcycle-related, but where you've really thought, wow, this is, we're pushing the envelope no. here? Or? Mission 7. I watched the movie the other day, uh, a, a, a couple of days ago, we just a rough cut. And I think it's, I think, personally, not being biased, but it's definitely the best, best mission ever. It's uh, the bike jump we did. <clears throat> Kieran prepped that bike, the, if you've seen it, off the ramp the base jump he did with the motorbike. In the movie, obviously that ramp is gonna become the mountain. Yeah. Because we didn't have a perfect <clears throat> long ramp mountain. It wasn't, didn't exist in the world and we looked for it. I went to a dozen countries, heli scouting and base jumping all over Europe and the States looking for the perfect ramp. We nearly had one in Switzerland. It wasn't quite long enough. Um, so we built this ramp and the most dangerous part, the actually doing the stunt was much more dangerous than it looks in the movie because he was you know, 60 foot up sometimes on a, on a ramp like this. So we drew the red line down the middle that you'll see on the behind the scenes. And then I would sit with an anemometer and check the crosswind and we'd have gusting crosswinds. We aborted many days, it was just too much. If it blew him off, he's gonna drop 60 foot onto just rocks everywhere. So what it looks like in the movie is actually not as dangerous as it actually was. Well, I have to say, having seen the behind the scenes and then seen the stunt, and, and you look at the ramp, and I wouldn't want to be on that ramp even just riding up there and having a look. I mean, it thousands was terrifying. of foot up, yeah, it was, it was yeah. terrifying. Standing at the end of it, looking down the, the wall was even more terrifying. But, you know, he, we trained a lot. You know, Tom did hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of jumps um, from a helicopter at the same speed, simulating it, um, coming down the ramp and jumping off 
uh, off the helicopter skid, simulating the bike speed into the bowl to feel the wind in the bowl. We did that a lot. Um, and then a lot of bike jumps. We set up a, a system at a quarry, and we jumped the bike into boxes so we didn't destroy the bikes. And uh, with him on wires, and we just kept on to get the body position perfect. And more importantly, that we could capture it on camera. You know, easy to do it with a drone miles away. And, but we want to capture that as Tom Cruise doing it the whole way so that the audience are immersed in the character. Like he's, I can't give, I need to give the story away. But he, um, he, he has to get to the next point because he has to help X. You know, so you, you, you want him to do it. If we cut suddenly a YouTube style objective shot of a stuntman doing a jump, you're like, all right, we, now we're watching a stunt. And now we back to it, and you, you know, you just get taken out of it for that little brief moment. And with missions, we don't do that because we can obviously, with Tom, he's a, he's a stuntman that acts basically. Um, so yeah, he that was. I, I got to say, I've been doing it 32 years or something in the business. But when he, after all that training, I had the captain of the Red Bull Air Force with me. He did all the base training, and when he the first take, because I cued him, so it had to be perfect. So it was. It was my hand drop that made him go. And when he actually launched and I saw him drop, I actually, I was like, I just turned around to the guy and we were both like, fuck, did we just <laughs> kill Tom Cruise? <laughs> you know, it's like, and uh, that was it. Because I would never work again. Mm. <laughs> and, and what are some of the others? I mean, I remember being, uh, you talked about Jenny Tinmouth. Yeah. I mean, just the way she rode a bike, her, her body language and the way she moved and changed direction. I she's mean, awesome. Pretty that, awe-inspiring. I, I mean, she's become a good friend, but again, Rick will remember the day, but I, another little backstory, obviously you won't hear about this anywhere, but you know what I'm going to say. Well, when I met, I had Steve Platter, I had David Knight, you know, World Enduro Cross champion, I had Freddie Sheen, we had, I just got together a whole group. I was going to have Guy Martin, but I would have lost most of the group that I had, so we didn't have Guy. Um, <laughs> on the same bit of time, man. But we had, anyway, we had all these legends um, without Guy. All these legends at the track, we did it at Goodwood. And I walked in and I said, all right, all, everyone else, is, and Jorian Pomonorov, you know, the trick rider, and Sarah Letso, all the trick riders as well. So I went, right, everyone, just the riders for a briefing, please. So all these amazing, amazing riders. And um, <clears throat> Kieran was sitting there in his tweed jacket with his leather cuff. Sorry, Kieran, I've got to do it. <laughs> and, uh, and Jenny was sitting there. And Jenny sort of like just looked at the ground. She's so humble, it's ridiculous. And I was like, are you? I mean, I knew who Jenny was. So I knew she was there. I'm like, you know, I was like, I thought he was someone's manager. <laughs> <laughs> so it, was, like, it was an interview, you know, I thought. <laughs> He dressed, go he dressed very young smart young for the interview. He dressed properly, young man. Everyone well, else was like scruffy, well, like was. everyone was limping and scruffy, you know, basically. And all the other man TT riders. And um, anyway, so I said, on the, on the, everyone put your helmets on the bike. And I mean, Jenny literally, I, she, she was so humble and quiet. Um, the, two, the two trick riders, Jorian and Sarah, were out in shorts and trained as a good racetrack uh, and a, on BMW 1000 uh, RRs. I was like, no, you've got to put your, your leathers on. They went, we, we don't have leathers, you know, they're trick riders. Mm -hmm. So I, I left them in the car park doing tricks. And uh, these guys went out. So I was, we did a whole transition of stuff. And then I got out in the BMW. I'm like, all right, I want you guys right up against me. I want a bit of weaving, not wheeling. I just want a bit of movement. So give the bike energy and life and speed, but without just weaving monotonously so it looks like you're just weaving. Like, Give it life, dab of the brake, you just give it energy. It's a way you can give a car or a bike energy, shifting weight and suspension, body roll. And uh, I looked around, there's these two like, all over me. And when we came to the pits, it was Kieran and Jenny. So those were my first two picks. And then I gave everyone guns. And I said, right, <laughs> so now I'm gonna, what I want you to do is I'm going to chase you. And when I honk the horn, you're going to turn around and you're going to shoot at me with a gun, fake gun, obviously. And it was at Thruxton we did that. And it was uh, Steve Splatter, Steve Platter, um, David Knight, Kieran, Jenny. Um, Rick wasn't there because Rick knows how to do it now. He's been film, film, you know, savvy. And I went bop, bop, and they all turn around. And as they turn here, they, obviously your natural thing is it? And all of them went off into the infield at Thruxton, like almost synchronized, like they didn't crash. They all just, they all just turned the same angle and went right across the grass. And then weapons got, rubber guns gone, and they were like, because they're just not used to shooting guns on a motorbike. They're yeah, funny, that. Yeah. 
So is that should be part of the CBT, uh, just to, to help, help us all along a little bit? Yeah. But that's sort of the, you know, so we do all these drills and it's fun and, you know, it's a lot of the stuff that, you know, members of the public that are film, love film and bikes and film don't get to see, but there's, there's a whole system. And for me, it's, it's just awesome having all this talent and being able to, you know, to, to give them great jobs and opportunity to have this, you know, to work in film, which is great fun. And, and what have been the big surprises along the way for you in terms of any experiences or people or actors who, who didn't do what you expected or did more than you expected? I've got to say Tom. You know, he's, 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 a, he's, a, he's a machine. The guy will... The guy trains so hard, like, ridiculously. I mean, he's 60 years old. Mm. And he is an absolute machine. He will give any 20-year-old a run for their money um, running bike riding, car drifting, his drifting is amazing. He's, he, he's so dedicated, puts in so much, and also he can act. That's the other thing, you know, we all do it and we crash a bike, just, we all just want the crash. We hate the acting part, we just like, it's, you know, can we go, can we go? Can we? And then we just want to do it and crash, or drive it, and he does all this performance, and then, for me, in my 30 odd years in the business, he is way up there. Um, and you know, there's a lot of triers, a lot of people that really put the work in and try. Um, Daniel Craig, Angelina, you know, Brad, they all try. Uh, Chris Hemsworth, awesome. He's not really a bike guy, but he's, uh, he's a great guy. But there's no one. I mean, he's in a different stratosphere, Tom. He, he's so committed. And also, he loves bikes and cars. Mm -hmm. Like, he's always riding around London, always on his bikes. Because uh, he can just be anyone. He, he puts his helmet on. And he rides everywhere. He literally rides everywhere in town just because he, he enjoys you know, not being seen, not being known. And so are you lining up the next big stunt? Yeah, we're already uh, three, four months into filming. Is there anything you can tell us about the kind of things we might be experiencing? Do you want to know the opening sequence of Mission 8? Yeah, I think that's a yes from everybody. I yes. Think. I've got a sniper in the corner. I'm not <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that a red dot? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> No, it's uh, Mission 8. Mission 7, as I said, is oh, it's just so epic scale-wise. It's a good, a fun, a fun movie. Um, and that's what Tom's movies are, like Maverick. It was like, felt like you're back in the 80s, 90s, having a good time. It wasn't full of you know, visual effects and a bunch of people doing a bunch of, you don't know why they're doing it. It's just an overload of visual, you know, visual stimulation. It's like there's heart and soul and story, and it's just a good, fun films. But... The sequence we've just finished for Mission 8 is, is frightening. The audience are going to get sick watching it. It really is frightening. And, and what about the whole kind of... I mean, I was intrigued listening to you talking about turning with a gun. Because also, you know, as well as riding bikes and driving cars fast, people are having kind of fist fights on bikes and yeah. punching each other. And, and I mean, and there's, so there's a whole extra element going on there. I mean, how does that get kind of woven into things? And, and is that also something, I mean, do you have to get sort of fight martial arts people on top of it, or are you doing all of that stuff as well? Yeah, no, we do all that. That's sort of, we have to be versatile. As I always say, versat versatility is value. So if you're versatile, you're valuable. If I've got bike guys that just do bikes, we might only do a bike movie once a year or once every four years. Mm. Um, so then the rest of the time, they'd have to get another job. So I always, if they're really into film, I'm like, learn about film. Learn the history of film. Um, you know, be immersed in it. Don't be in it just for the, for the bike gag or for the money. Get immersed in it. And then learn skills. So you can learn to fight and fall, and, and then you can, you can have much more opportunity, much more work um, that way. So, Is there a bike stunt that you want to do that you're looking for an opportunity to do? We just did do? it. That, you, that, yeah. was, that was the one. Yeah, I wanted yeah. to do that. A lot. <laughs> I, I guess um, one of the things, you know, that we, we see a lot of young riders coming into biking now. And, and is this something where you have to be kind of into racing first? Is it, have you always got to have that kind of grounding in sport and start when you're four and be riding no, dirt just, bikes? You know, there's a lot of talent out there. We all know. There's, 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 there's you know, probably a 50 people that could be MotoGP champions on the right bike. There's 50 guys that girls that could be Formula One world champions in the right car. Um, you know, so it's just opportunity. Uh, I've been able to meet, lucky enough being in the position I'm in, I get to meet some, you know, world-class riders and drivers and hang out with these great people. And I've also met a lot of people that were right on the edge, that names that you won't know, that were almost um, there, that are so quick. 
that those guys that are in those positions in F1 and MotoGP will tell you, like, I was scared of that person because they were, they would have destroyed me. They just didn't have the right bike progression through the teams or the right car progression through the teams. And it's just a lot of opportunity. So, no, I, I would say that if you've got, you know, it's in your blood, if you've been riding or driving your whole youth and you've got a lot of skills, then, and you understand film, you're the full pack, like Rick. Rick wasn't a racer. He came from, you know, bikes, a passion, and he trains nonstop on trick riding. He's nonstop on his bike. And he understands film for so many years that he is the full package for bikes. Um, but generally, you can't teach, you know, when guys coming out the corners and just two wheel drifting on their warm up laps. That, that day that I interviewed everyone, I said, slow three laps. Mm. I said, I just want to slow three laps, see you like the bike setup, otherwise, come and we'll change the setup, have a whole team, change the geometry, and change the setup, change the tire pressures, whatever you want, warm up. And I was standing on the corner, and you were one of them. Came out the court, came out this court. I mean, full drift to the outside wall, like to it, like I was like red flag. This, I was like jumped out of the red flag. The session, I was because obviously I've got liability. I've got to watch out as well. So, and I bollocked them all. I was like, I told you, and they all just looked at me like that was warm up. <laughs> and I was like, all right, off you go. It was crazy talent. I mean, I think the thing that is really exciting, specifically about the the mission films, and and actually also the new Top Gun is in, in a world where everything is more fake and CGI and blue screen, green screen, you know, we're so used to seeing, and, and we don't even flinch when we, we, we see the behind the scenes fake mm -hmm. stuff. I mean, it's really refreshing and exciting to see that actually the gold standard is doing it for real. Yeah. I mean, do you think that's gonna continue? Are we gonna be able to keep relying on this? I hope it's so. got to be real flesh and blood. And I hope so, I mean, Tom's a massive ambassador for that. and. Got to take your hat off to him. You know, he, he really does push for it. Um, the studios will always push for us. Oh, put a green screen up and do that. We'll, you know, we shoot that for 100 grand. But it's a million if we go and do to a location. I say, yeah, but you can't capture that depth, that color, you know, that color saturation, that, the, the emotional feeling you get when you're in a real environment rather than like pretending. And we could have done that bike jump on green screen easily with fans. And, but the audience would know, but more importantly, Tom would know in his performance. Um, and it's just, that's why I don't do those movies. Well, I think also because the, how, the, the story behind storytelling is now part of the story. Mm -hmm. So when you know there's incredible stunts or things are being fi filmed for real in camera, it gives you more reason for all of us to go, want to go and watch these films. Mm -hmm. Because the, almost the problem with CGI now is you can do anything. So what's going to make you want to go and watch something that you know isn't authentic? It's true, and I, I just did a really weird little project um, in France, the animation project, uh, the, just the Minions, Despicable Me, that franchise. Yeah. And they called me up to come out and do something. I'm like, I don't know, what this call? I thought it was a joke, prank call. And they were like, no, we want you to come to Illumination in Paris and do this talk um, for our animators. And you know, so I went, all right. So I ended up being in Paris for four months. It was like the best time I've ever had in film, on what, any sort of film. Cause, and basically, these animators, to, to answer your question, these animators can put the camera wherever you want because it's all an animation. So you, can, you could put the camera in space wherever you want in a car chase, an animation, or a bike chase. And <clears throat> I had to teach the animators how to be subjective with a camera. Classics, over shoulders, subjective film, you know, storytelling where you're immersed in the character. You're not just doing it because you can do it. And that's where the more the audience are getting more mature for those animation, you know, those animated movies, that we had to sort of recenter them, almost teach them the basics, the stuff that these, some of these animators never knew because they've always had this this palette that they can put the camera wherever they want. Um, so that to answer your question. So you were there to put the analog back, back into, into the, the digital, digital yeah. yeah. Which is which is really why we why we love the whole genre. I mean, yeah. and, and and you know you're you're. You're putting that passion and that, that guts and, and that viscerality into something that's otherwise just pure entertainment. Yeah, it's true. It's true. And another thing with, with the bikes, going back to bikes, so I'd have to think, of, I was looking out in the, in the show here, Triumph. It's since the very early days, if you think, count how many films have had, how many iconic films have had a British brand like that, whether American or not, it's either a Harley or it's a Triumph. It's with the, you know, with the Great Escape. With Marlon Brando, yeah, um, wild ones. You know, we've we've had Tom with a Speed Triple, Henry with a Speed Triple RS. 
Um, Rebecca with the XCX. You know, there's a lot of, from old, you know, from way back, 51 mm. Marlon Brando, 53, um, Triumph T-Bird, Thunderbird. Yeah. Um, and that's, uh, you think about that little factory back then, this little organization was doing bikes in the war as well, but it's kind of interesting how the crossover from UK bikes yeah. into mainstream. Well, you're, the movies are the ads creating iconic bikes and rides. Yeah. I mean, I remember one of the, I mean, for me, I, I got a Ducati Sport Classic 1000 because of that opening scene in Tron. Because yeah, I yeah, yeah. saw that bike and I was yeah. like, what is that? Yeah. I mean, obviously I didn't look like it when I was riding, but uh, that, the, that was my aspiration. And I also remember in The Matrix, the, the 916s, yeah, exactly. riding the wrong way it's on the Senna, was it 916 Senna? Yeah. Yes, yeah. And, and just thinking, you know, that really did look like that. It was the style icon motorcycle of that era of that movie. And then that's the thing for me. I mean, it, the, the, stunt, the stunt work has to go with it because normal riding has to look amazing. Yeah. As I was saying earlier, you know, you see yourself, see any of us riding a bike, it doesn't look interesting. But you've really, got, to, you've got you, to put that body English. You've in. got to step up. It's like it's same with drifting. Mm. You know, if you're talented and you can do it, um, but you you sort of like if I get into drifting is more my background. If I get in a drift car and I, I'm showing someone an actor and I just drift, uh, it's just you know, I'll, I'll complete the course, but I won't. It won't be perfect. You've sort of got to wake yourself up. If you've got to like energize yourself to to adrenalize yourself, but not pass that point of con lack of control. And the same on a bike. You know, you can ride lazy in the street, and then if you adrenalize yourself and you suddenly you get on it, you know, your body, then you ride. You can take your riding to that next level. It's very easy to ride lazy. Do you think anyone can learn not to do what you do, but to to get to that next level where you? Because I, I sometimes feel, and I'm sure a lot of people here who ride a bike, when you watch somebody slide in the back wheel around a corner, or if you go to a supermoto school and do a little kind of backing it in, which usually is cheating because you just use the back brake instead of accelerating yeah. out. You know, you kind of feel like uh, we know what we should be doing, but there's almost like a safety valve that stops you doing it. Just seat time. Mm. That's all, seat time and coaching. You know, it's like so many little things come out from someone that's been in it their whole life um, when they teach you. And it's just, for me, with my, you know, with my racing like F3, I would never have been competitive if I didn't have someone telling me that I'd been racing since I was a kid you know, change this, do this, do that. And it's like, oh, I just used to get in and go as fast as I could, but it's not, it's not good enough, you know? So it's just seat time and, and coaching and, and have, allowing that time so you have a gradient. If you suddenly go, your gradient's like that, you're going to crash for sure. And then you, it's going to take you longer to get back on the bike if, in, in, in so many times. Yeah, because we all aspire to be these heroes. Yeah. We all want to up our game a, a little bit, but we still can. Yeah, exactly. And who, I mean, in terms of, I mean, you've done some incredible, I mean, I, I hope most of you got to sh play, show the reel. We should probably play it again. No, I don't. It's so long. Yeah, I forgot it was that long. Yeah, but I mean, it's... No wonder I've got no hair. I don't it's think anybody years. here is going, oh, this reel's long. Um, I'm a bit bored now. Um, oh, me, I was, Because <laughs> I know sure. a lot of people wait for that. a little break and to go to the loo. And I think uh, what we should do is play the thing again. Play it at the end when I, there's when no we, one when I leave. So <laughs> as you guys leave, you, as we leave, you can get to see yeah. it again. But, uh, but it's... Um, it, what, in terms of all of those films, because there were some incredible movies there. I mean, I, I, was, I, was, I was watching it with Vicky, and I said, I think that's pretty much every one of my favourite films and all of them, and now there are some I need to go and see again because I need to watch that. Mm. Uh, which, which film or which cast, which was just the most fun? I mean, just from a, a really personal fun level, where, where are you guys really having a good time and hanging out and it's just all a ball? It's missions. Yeah? Because it's the last movie you can do. Like, the, the thing I did in Paris was great because I had loads of time with my family. <clears throat> so that was a different type of, you know, it was good from a different aspect because we had time off and we could just hang out. Um, but for fun, I mean, mission... I mean, I've got to work... I'm flying a helicopter because I, 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 love my, I love flying as well, so I'm, like, flying helicopters and, with my team mm. up mountains in Norway and the Alps, and then we're base jumping or speed flying or doing whatever we're doing and riding bikes and testing bikes. We've got Thruxton, Goodwood. I do a lot of Goodwood and stuff because it's a fast track, it's a nice track. There's not, not a lot of bikes allowed on there normally. Um, and we just like all out there with these bikes and a full team setting the bikes up for us. We're like, how do we get this job? It's awesome. Um, and then, you know, the cars, when I'm doing a car sequence, I've got to teach the actors. So we have a full, you know, plethora of cars with an with a action vehicle team. 
of mechanics that are, you know, you come in, your tires are smoking, you don't come and jump in the, the next car where well, they change those, those tires. And then the movie finishes and it's back to you paying for a, a drift track somewhere and changing your own tires that you just spent like a couple of hundred quid on and you're moaning about it, you've got to fit them in the boot of your car. And you suddenly in this thing where you've got a whole lineup of brand new M3s or whatever it is and a full team of mechanics and you're like, how, how is, this is the coolest job in the world. How? So missions for sure, because every other film pretty much, nah, they'd be like, put it on a rig and green screen behind you and pretend that you're drifting with fans blowing on you and stuff. It's like, how many missions have you done? Done four of the eight, yeah. And who else is kicking ass in mission? Because uh, obviously we've had a little bit of insight into Pom's training. Pom's awesome. I mean, she's the kicking Pom's up. Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, yeah, you character? guys are going to see Pom Clementiev in a very different light. In, in she mission. is just brilliant. It, it, yeah, she took a lot of taming in a car. Really? Oh, God, she was like, she's very French in that way of like, gets in, it's like, let's go. And it's like, bah, it's gone. I was like, whoa, 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 you know, and straight off the runoff at Bedford, because I use Bedford a lot because it's got a lot of runoff. I mean, straight off the runoff across the grass and still accelerating. It's like, you're like, stop. It's, she is just all in, balls to the wall. She's an animal um, and the most fun. But then, you know, you seat time. Yeah. And she just did that really cool BMW. Yeah, I, I, that's spot, really good fun, isn't it? I, if you guys get a chance, the BMW have just done a new film, which, uh, a short film for Cannes Film Festival, yep. where she has a punch up in the back of a BMW, a like, big electric kind of luxury vehicle. And it's a, it's a great fight sequence. She's brilliant. Pom's amazing. Hayley Atwell in this movie yeah. is incredible. And teaching her was great fun um, because she, she said she'd. When she first came to Bedford to drive, I put her in an M2 competition. And I said, when, when, you know, how often do you drive? And she goes, I think I drove to the shops about six years ago. <laughs> and I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, wow. And she got really good, because she's very focused. Um, so all her driving is real. Um, obviously, Tom's driving is always real. But Tom was driving. Ooh, have, I nearly gave it away. Have you seen that? The movie's not out yet. Shit. Well, we've seen the little. Thing yeah, clip. Least, so like, when you. Yeah. Okay, and there's something else. He's dri and he drives all one handed. He has to. And you could cheat it. And when I was testing it, I was occasionally like touching my other hand and thinking, oh shit, I just touched my other hand. But he didn't see it, you know. Cause I, and he goes, how do you. Was that easy? I'm like, yeah, it was easy. And then he'd go and he, <laughs> he doesn't cheat. He makes sure he doesn't for camera. So. And he would take a few goes at it. But I would like flick my hand a little bit to help the steering wheel and then put it away. But. Um, no, he, he was good, but Hayley Atwell was amazing. Rebecca Ferguson, who plays Ilsa, she's always great. Simon Pegg's brilliant. We did loads of driving with him. He's, he was going to do a, something with driving, and maybe he does, you'll have to see. But um, he was, got very good at stopping on the marks, sliding up and stopping on marks. Handbrake, sorry, handbrake turn to a mark. Um, yeah, everyone, Great I'm going to have to say, you're making actors sound a lot better than we probably all think they are. Well, mission cast are great. There's a lot of proper, right, annoying actors and actors. But there's a lot of annoying people in all walks of life. But actors generally are in that, that type of job. But the mission actors that we have are just... Because Tom wants to make sure that when you come on a mission, you're literally going on a mission. So you've got to be on board. If you've bullshitted and said, yeah, I can do that, I can ride a horse, I can drive a car and you get on the move and you can't, you, you're gone. Um, he wants people that want to, you know, be part of the movie, not just come in, collect a paycheck and leave. He wants people to be, collaborate. Um, he's very, very strong on that. So he's, he's never says it's, you know, it's my movie, even though he's a producer, it's all about movie to the crew. He's, he's very much a collaborator. Um, so the actors have to step up, but when you've got you know, these actors and actresses like Rebecca, you know, she played, you know, princess or, you know, these other regal roles and suddenly you're coming in, right, you're going to drift a car around here, then you're going to run and jump on a motorbike, ride down those stairs and, and they're like, you know, you're shitting me. And I'm like, no, that's your role. Didn't you read the script? And they're like, yeah, but surely you got, you're going to have two stunt doubles do that for me. I'm like, uh-uh, you're going to learn to do it. Um, and normally it takes about three weeks. It's like, you know, when you go... New Year's Day and you say, I'm going to go to the gym this year and it takes you about three weeks to get into it and you hate those first three weeks. It's sort of like that for them. They hate the first three weeks and then they get addicted to the adrenaline and, and the learning curve. They just get addicted to it. They want more. They can't get enough. And then, you know, once they get good, they're on their way. 
And, uh, and in, uh, we've heard lots of kind of rumors about Mission 8, about things like going into space and all sorts of stuff mm -hmm. that circulates around. You know, I mean, can you, give us, can you give any clues as to any of the stuff that we might get to see? I mean, it, I mean look, it, it's a two-parter, so mm -hmm. you may as well tease us a little bit to make sure we all go and see, <coughs> go and see the, 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 first, the first half of the, of the double. Um, Are you allowed to tell us anything? No, we could I can't. All, we'll delete it later. Yeah, right. not, uh, <laughs> I trust all of you. Um, emphatically, no, I can't, but it's bigger than seven, and seven's huge. Yeah, so, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's so scary, the cut of what we shot already for eight. It, it was, it's scary to watch, and I was there. It, it's, it's really good. Wow. Okay, well, well thank you so much. Uh, I'm, no I'm sure all of you guys are just as, as chuffed as we are to, to, to hear from, hear from Wade and also to be joined by you, Kieran. So thank you so much. And I think it would be rude if we didn't play the reel again oh, as, no. as we depart the stage. And, and, and for those of you who didn't see it, it's basically all of your favorite action sequences <laughs> from, the, from the last several massive movies.